Joining me now is Professor Amr Athli, President of the Egypt-Japan University of Science and Technology, also known as EJUST. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. It's a great pleasure for me, definitely. So, uh, how is EJUST uh, research-based and how does it implement a Japanese approach to its teaching? Well, actually, uh, Japanese approach encourages students uh, to active learning, uh, encourages the actually research-based education. And this uh, is what we are adopting and this is exactly what can uh, actually uh, advance science. We know that students sometimes uh, excel beyond their teachers, otherwise science would have never developed. And sometimes undergrads would surprise you with out-of-the-box ideas. So definitely uh, we like this Japanese approach. Because not only what I mentioned, but uh, Japanese concepts also uh, stress values. Uh, stress uh, ethics in science, ethics in society, and stress culture. And we believe that this is very important in shaping the personality of future engineers. How is Egypt and Japan working together to enhance higher education in the Middle East and beyond? Since the very beginning, uh, after uh, actually partnering with Japan and uh, developing our curricula uh, in accordance with Japanese standards, uh, the Ministry of Higher Education started to adopt some of our principles while initiating new universities. So we were like the role model. Not only that, uh, EJUST is the place where the, the Japanese government decided uh, to have the TCAD 7 uh, scholarship uh, to make available 150 scholarships for African students. Uh, many of them uh, would return to their countries and have something about Japanese education uh, well, we have also uh, some grants from the Ministry of Higher the Egyptian Ministry of Higher Education, for uh, TAs preparing uh, for their PhDs to return back to be professors at their Egyptian university. So far, 190 Egyptian professor at different. Wow, it's amazing that the impact is going beyond just Egypt and yes. around the world. Exactly. Um, and what is EJUST doing uh, to support early career individuals looking to transition into the field of robotics? Uh, we know that uh, robotics is interdisciplinary. Uh, we have all the ingredient uh, specializations for robotics. We have the communication electronics, we have the, uh, of course, uh, mechatronics, we have the electrical power, we have the everything. Uh, our students are very active. And uh, the students club, robotics club, uh, maybe uh, has maybe 70 or 80 students from different disciplines. They participate in competitions, they design robots, and they, they compete, whether nationally or internationally, and we make fund available for them because we believe that this is extremely important. Wow, that's, it seems like you're doing a lot of initiatives. Yes. And uh, finally, how do you see the role of robots in the education of the future? Uh, in my opinion, in the near future, uh, robots can assist in uh, uh, assist professors in moving gadgets, uh, in moving uh, educational. But uh, in my opinion, um, I don't think robots will substitute uh, human teachers in the near future because, uh, yes, we had advances in AI when it comes to uh, many aspects, but in my opinion, not advances enough in emotional artificial intelligence or social artificial intelligence. Uh, I believe that this might develop in the coming decade. Uh, so, and by the way, I am following up on this because I'm uh, affiliated to IEEE myself. I'm the editor in chief of the IEEE Transactions of Magnetics. So uh, uh, I know uh, what, what type of advances and efforts are being taken, but I believe not in the coming decade. I see. Thank you for your insight and thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. It's a, a great pleasure for me to be here uh, at this uh, wonderful conference at the wonderful place. Thank you.